Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us uh, on this very special Mother's Day. I know it's an unusual day. We're unable to meet together to celebrate Mother's Day, but what a special day. And I hope that even though you're at home, probably there with your family, that you still feel very loved and appreciated. The, the, this morning's message is especially about you and all that you contribute to the lives of your children and, and the community, and we just want to thank you for joining. It's going to be a great service. I look forward to uh, you joining us and, and worshiping with us. Now, turn your heart to the Lord and uh, use this time now to really just praise Him and also to bring all of your needs before Him because He loves you and He cares for everything that's going on in your life. Let's pray and we'll begin our worship. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus, how he died for us. He, he rose again and he loves us. And those who trust in him have eternal life. And this morning as we celebrate Mother's Day, I want to thank you for, for our mothers. Lord, uh, we are so thankful for the contribution that they made in each of our lives. And we hope this morning that they will feel especially loved and, and celebrated in all that they've done. We pray now, ask your blessing on this service and the worship in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. It's, it's actually morning where you are, but it's not morning where I am, but this is a recording. So I just hope that you get up when you start watching this and that you lift your hearts and lift your spirits to God and just worship along with us. Praise Jesus. Church, have fun with this. clapping right now. Everything to you, not home. 
I'm giving it all to you. Giving it all to you, God. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, hey amen. I want to hear everybody on this stage say hallelujah. Church, I hope you just said hallelujah too. And you know what? No matter where we are today, no matter that we can't be together, we can all worship God Almighty and his risen son, Jesus Christ. And we can do it together. We can do it in, in all across this nation. And that's what's going to happen this weekend on Mother's Day. Thank God for mothers and how awesome they are. Praise Jesus. Just keep singing with us. your name on high Lord I love to sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my life come on I'm so glad you came to save us you know what you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross Lord, I lift your name on high. Come on, keep singing with us, church. Here we go. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. Yes, I am. So glad you came to save us. Come on now. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Sing that again. You came from heaven. your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Woo. Oh, praise Jesus. Man, I just love these songs, and, and I love the way they, they make us just want to move and just want to worship God. And that's what it's all about. It's just making you come out of that shell, come out of that, that little wall that you've built, and get outside of that and just want to lift your hearts to God and to worship Him.
stumble in the darkness. Come on now. I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. The universe declares your majesty. church. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for moms. God, where would we be without moms? Well, to begin with, we wouldn't be here. God, you created both man and woman and you brought them together and you gave these women this amazing gift to be able to give birth to children. And Father, they, they raise us and they love us and they nurture us and they give us everything that they have within themselves. And God, this is just a miracle. So we thank you today for our mothers, whether they be here or whether they be with you in heaven, God. We thank you for them, for their presence, and for the mark that they've left on our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Stay. 
cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord of the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, church, if you will, I want you to bow and pray with me. Father God, we thank you that you have brought Stuart to pastor and to lead this church and to shepherd all of your, all of your children. God, we just pray for him today, that you would be with him uh, through this message, that you would guide and direct his every word. Prepare our hearts, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's great to be here again, especially uh, to celebrate Mother's Day. Uh, what a special day. And man, I didn't want that music to stop. I mean, it just seemed like it went by so fast. Uh, I was, man, I was enjoying that. It really sounded great. It's beautiful and opportunity to worship the Lord. You know, there are certain sermons that pastors um, are challenged with and others are very, very easy. And I want you to know something that I can't think of another sermon other than maybe Easter or Christmas that is easier to do than a Mother's Day sermon. You know, I mean, it's just, when you think about it, how do you mess up a Mother's Day sermon? You know, you got to, if, if, if you're so slow that you mess this one up, something's wrong. Because what you got to do, and really it's, it's not hard to do, you stand up here and you celebrate the female gender, you celebrate motherhood, and you, you spend really the entire morning just praising what women do on a consistent basis every day of their lives. And that's not a hard thing to do because there is so much to choose from. There is so much to look at and say, look at how my mom or this woman has impacted a specific situation. Ladies, you do a phenomenal job at... Um, all the things that you do every day, and we're going we're gonna to kind of take a look at that. So for me, it's just a fun time to really uh, reflect and, 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 and talk about all the great things that you guys do for us all the time. And let me just say that I'm the one who gets to stand up here and do this, but really I'm, I'm standing here speaking on behalf of every man in this church uh, and all the children, the sons and the daughters, um, and just praising you for all the great things that you do. You deserve a day, at least one day a year, um, to, to get a pat on the back for all that you do. It's, it's great. You know, different women experience motherhood differently. But I've talked with uh, several women uh, recently about this, and one of the things that seemed to come back over and over, a theme uh, when we talk about being a mom, is that they saw being a mom as one of the most important things that they ever did in their life. Whether they're a young mother, and by the way, we have a couple of young moms this uh, celebration uh, this year. Uh, congratulations to you, Caitlin and uh, Saranda. If I forgot somebody, forgive me, but uh, those two women celebrated having their first uh, children, and this is their first official Mother's Day. Uh, but, you know, you guys need a pat on the back um, just for everything that you contribute. But, but mothers experience uh, being a mom in different ways. But, but the theme that kept coming back that I kept hearing over and over again 
was that mothers saw it as truly one of the most important missions they ever experienced in life. And that's not, that's not an easy thing to do in today's world because if you consider the influence that the world and the messages that the world sends out to moms today, it's very, uh, it's, it's very challenging, uh, you know, to say the least. You know, the world would say as a mom or as a woman, you're supposed to experience it all. You're supposed to be a mother, and then you're supposed to have a career, and, you know, all of these various things. You travel and, and just, you know, all of these different things that you're supposed to, to, to do to be a complete woman, a, a, you know, fully fulfilled and all of that. But in reality, I think that that's a false message because anytime you try to get everything, you'll find that you've got to give up something. If you go after everything in this world and all that it offers uh, women, uh, mothers, I think you'll find that you're going to run out of energy. There's only so much of you to go around and you have to spend your time focused on that which is most important. And for for, uh, for those who have children, I, I know y'all have said clearly that uh, it, it is truly a mission uh, and you have to kind of block out what the world says and focus in on what's really important. And if you're here and you're a young mom or, or, or a mom who's kind of has teenagers or something and you're thinking, you've been denying yourself, you know, week after week, month after month, year after year, all the things that maybe you want to do understand that it it's a season in life this is another thing that some of the more senior moms told me that it's a season in life that they know that there's a day coming when their children will leave the nest and go on and and uh, be productive children in society and that then you can go on to do other things in your life so it is a season of life but I want to tell you there's three things that I think of when I think of a mom there are at least three things that mothers do this morning that we should all celebrate the first thing is mom's love. I mean, when you think about being a mom, the, 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 the one word, the singular word that comes to my mind is love. That, that woman who bore that child or adopted a child or somehow has, has sought to be an influence in a child's life, they love. self self-sacrificial they they give of themselves and they love moms love the second things moms do and this is something you should celebrate and maybe remind yourself of that it, it that it adds up is that moms make an impact your influence in your children and your family's life your husband's life make a huge impact and then finally moms you leave a legacy you leave a legacy, and we're going to talk about those things this morning. I want to talk specifically right now about how moms love. I mean, this is just, this is in the trenches. This is when you get down and you just, you just remind yourself of what mothers do. Day by day, mothers change a lot of diapers. A lot of diapers, man, that's, that's some tough duty right there. They make a lot of peanut butter sandwiches. I know one of my daughters, one of my two daughters, she lived on peanut butter sandwiches for at least a couple of years. They tie a lot of shoes. You know, you get used to that bending over and tying the shoes, getting down on your knees and tying the shoes. They give a lot of hugs. They give an occasional swat. Got to knock you around a little bit when you get out of line. They tell a lot of bedtime stories. They do a lot of fever checks. They take care of the dog when you should have. They brush your teeth, they comb your hair, and they give you a whole lot of kisses when you feel hurt. Now, what, that's the day-to-day -day stuff. What about the week-by-week -week stuff? Well, they get you dressed for school. They dress you for church. They give you car rides everywhere to soccer and to baseball and dance. They help you with your schoolwork, and they'll even be a great partner to sit and watch a good movie with sometimes. What about month to month? How do moms love? Well, they're there when you're down. They encourage you. You know, when you go through the ups and downs week by week or month by month in life, they encourage you when you're down. They pick up your clothes when you should have done it. They challenge you to do your best. Most moms that I know, they want to see their children go on to become uh, grown-ups and 
leave the nest and be successful, and they encourage you to do your best. Don't settle for something less than your best. I love it when I see a mom laugh with her children. Man, that means so much. Those are memories, times when you just, you think back. I think about my own mom and how I used to sit at the table with her sometimes as I was older, when I was older, and we would laugh and just have a great time. It's so much fun to see it when children and mothers are on the playground and maybe they're silly together. You know, those are things that just become memories. But what about this? Even the bigger scheme of things, the bigger picture. Year by year, moms direct you in who and how to date and who to marry. They direct you in your career. Why? Because they know you. There's nobody on this earth that knows you better than your mother. She knows what you're like. She knows if you're extroverted or introverted. She knows if you are, you know, just all kinds of things about you. She knows the details of who you are and what you're like. And she is a good person to listen to. She knows what you're passionate about. She can direct you in your career. She always wants the best for you, and she is your biggest fan. And many times, most of the time, I would say most mothers at some point in their lives, because of all the things they do for you, role model better than anyone else in your life, unselfish love and devotion. Moms love. Listen to what Stephen Curtis Chapman said. He's a Christian author and singer. He wrote these words in a song um, called uh, One Heartbeat at a Time. He said, you're up all night with a screaming baby. You run all day at the speed of life. And you fall into bed when you run out of hours and you wonder if anything worth doing got done. Maybe you don't know this or maybe you've just forgotten. You are changing the world one little heartbeat at a time. One little heartbeat at a time. Making history with every touch and every smile. Moms love. Moms make an impact. You remember, I don't know, a couple weeks ago I talked about um, a person's contribution to the kingdom and how our service for the Lord adds up. You remember we talked about the idea that we would little by little uh, put, put uh, our, contra- our faithful love to the Lord in a jar. And if you were to kind of add that up, what happens is over a lifetime, your contribution, it adds up. Well, I can't think of any better person on this earth maybe that represents that very thing than a mom because if you think about all the things that they do, Day by day, week by week, month by month, it all just adds up. It accumulates to a lifetime of giving. Mothers make a difference. Your consistency and commitment makes a difference. When I think about my own mom, she wasn't a mom of faith. She didn't really teach me much about faith, but she was so kind-hearted. I loved her. She was a committed woman who loved her children and devoted her life to making our lives better I hope you had a mom like that. Listen again to some of, some of the lyrics from Stephen Curtis Chapman's song. He said, with every I know you can do it. Hey, Stuart, you can do this. Hey, Larry, you can do this. Hey, Caitlin, you can do this. You can do this. Every one of those times and every tear that you kiss away, so many little things that seem to go unnoticed. Listen to this. They're all just like drops of rain, drops of rain that eventually become a river. Your life is a life that makes an impact. Finally, what I want to say is that moms leave a legacy. They leave a legacy. The truth is, is you really never stop being a mom until you go to see Jesus. Your input and influence continues long after You aren't there in the daily lives taking care of your children. Once they're grown up and go on to have their own families and all, it seems like maybe your influence has has dropped off, but that's not true. Because the things that you imparted, the things that you poured into the souls of your children, go on with them no matter where they go. Your thoughts and your ideas, your love and your care guide them as they go through their life. That's the influence that you have. That is the legacy that you have your example of love and kindness are never forgotten I still remember the things that my mother did for me and as a matter of fact if you come into my home you wouldn't know this because you 
you're not attached to the things that you would see around my home, but many of the things that are decorated in my home, especially my office, remind me of my mom. They are mementos. They are, they are things that I collected that are memories that I have of a very loving mom. Amazing. It's, it, it just, it, she left me a legacy. She left me a legacy. Listen to this, these final lyrics. It says, oh, you... You may not see it now. You see, it's, it's not something that you're going to be able to, to immediately look forward and see the impact that you had. It's going to take time. It's going to take a lifetime. But I believe that time will tell how you, you are changing the world. You are changing the world one little heartbeat at a time. You are changing the world. Now, I thought it would be kind of interesting. Um, I got a hold of a couple of... Uh, generational families that we have in our church two of them um, Amanda Heaster most of y'all know Amanda and her mother is Susan Greenwood most of y'all know Susan Greenwood and I I just asked him a very simple question I said would you mind telling me the legacy that your mother has left to me something that you know you will remember about your mother and here's what Amanda said about Susan she said she gave me a sense of valuing family and making memories and traditions Family recipes are a big part of that, and spending quality time together, whether it was on road trips, visiting distant family, sharing family history stories, or spending time individually with grandkids. She said, another is her love for handcrafting. She taught me how to knit, crochet, cross-stitch, sew, restain, and paint furniture, make Christmas ornaments, and much, much more. I'm not a good artist, Amanda said, but I love and know how to do these things because of my mom. Listen to what Chelsea Gambino said about Sandy Wood. She said this amazing thing. She said, my mama has the biggest, most caring heart of anyone I know. Even when I think she shouldn't care, she still shows compassion and love. <laughs> this will always be her legacy to me. That's a beautiful thing. Now, before we end here, I want you to know something that as a mom, you're not alone. As a matter of fact, as I was thinking about preparing this sermon this week, I found an amazing example in Scripture of a woman who did these three things, a mom who loved, a, a mom who made an impact, and a mom who le made a, a, a left a legacy. And I want to share this scriptural example of her. Uh, her name is Eunice. And there's a, a little bit kind of painted through the pages of Scripture about Eunice. Now, you may not know this, but Eunice was the mother of Timothy. Timothy, you've probably read 1 Timothy or 2 Timothy. If you remember, Paul was an evangelist, and he, um, he actually asked Timothy to join him in his missionary journeys because he thought so much of Timothy and so, was so impressed with Timothy that he invited Timothy to come and be uh, a part of his missionary journeys. And that would never have happened had it not been for his mother, Timothy's mother, named Eunice. Let me read the three scriptures that tell us about her and what she was like. 2 Timothy 1.5. It says, For I am mindful, Paul is talking to Timothy, of the sincere faith within you which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I am sure that it is in you as well. So, Timothy had a heritage in his life. He had two women who were very godly women. His grandmother named Lois and his mother named Eunice. Now listen to, listen to this uh, expanded kind of explanation of the impact. That, this incredible impact that this one woman had or these two women, uh, these two mothers had on the life of Timothy. In 2 Timothy 3, verses 14 and 15, it says, You, however, Timothy, continue in the things that you have learned and become convinced of them, knowing from whom you have learned them. Who was that? That was Lois and Eunice. And that from your childhood you have known the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to come back to that verse in just a minute, but I want to read this final third 
third little narrative about these, this, this, these two women. In Acts chapter 16, verses 1 through 5, listen to what, listen to the legacy that this, the, the, these women, particularly Eunice, left in the life of Timothy, her son. Paul also came to Derby and to Lystra. Paul was on his first missionary journey. And it says that a disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer. Now listen to this. But his father was a Greek. He was a, he was a blended family. He had a Jewish mother and a Gentile father. And he was well spoken of by the brethren who were in Lystra and Iconium. In other words, Timothy had this amazing reputation. Paul wanted this young man to go with him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those parts, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. His father was a Gentile, didn't know the scriptures. Now while they were passing through the cities, they were delivering the decrees which had been decided upon by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for them to observe the churches so that the churches would be strengthened in faith and increase in number daily. Now let me, let me just explain how, how powerful and impactful this woman Eunice was. She was this little Jewish lady, a little devout Jewish lady. And she was married to a Gentile husband. The Gentile husband most likely didn't know the scriptures and was not committed to teaching the scriptures, but she was. She loved her son so much that on a regular basis it tells her that from childhood she taught the sacred writings, the scriptures, to her son Timothy, her beloved son Timothy. Now think about the challenge that that was. She's in this blended marriage where the Greek probably didn't have the faith that she had. We know for a fact that, that Eunice eventually came to faith in Christ and that she was a believer. And she, from the time Timothy was a little boy from childhood, she fed him the scriptures. She taught him the scriptures and guided him in how he should grow up and know the Lord and love the Lord. Folks, that's incredible. That is a mom who truly loved her son. She had to be intentional about that because most likely she didn't get a whole lot of support from her husband who was a Greek. I mean, she was committed. She had integrity and consistency and faithfulness to love her son and to, and to constantly feed him on the truth of the scriptures. So she greatly loved her son and knew that that was important. Think about how challenging that must have been for her. In an environment where she probably didn't get a lot of encouragement to say, oh, we've got to make sure that Timothy, you know, studies the scriptures. He didn't get that probably from her father. It's clear from Paul's writing that it came from his mother. His mother is the one who was committed to that. But she was not swayed by fear or lack of interest. She continued to faithfully encourage Timothy and what happened. He grew up to be a godly man. He grew up to be a man of influence. So much so that Paul wanted him. I mean, you think of all the people who Paul, this great Christian, probably the greatest Christian who ever lived, could have selected from to, to ask and invite to be a part of a missionary journey, and he picked Timothy. That is the impact that Eunice, his mother, had on him. How would you like to be a mother like that? How would you like to be a mother who poured your life into your sons and daughters and saw them eventually grow up to be a godly son or daughter who went out and served Christ or, or had some impact in the business world? She consistently pointed him toward Christ and encouraged and supported his ministry even after he left the household. <clears throat> so she loved him. She loved him and was committed to him. She also made a great impact. You know, many times moms make their greatest impact indirectly. They don't get the fanfare. You see, you produce a product that goes on to do something, but you don't get the congratulations. You don't get the, the accolades, the, the fanfare. No, it goes to the child. But it's you who created that product in a sense. Eunice raised a godly son. He went on to be the first pastor of the first church of Ephesus. That's a big deal. That's a very big deal. In God's kingdom and how it all kind of came about, that's a very big deal. She played a huge role 
in his development. Let me ask you a question. Do you realize, ladies, that if you raise your children to love and serve Christ, that your children's ministry is eventually, ultimately, an extension of you? Did you know that? Did you know that when you love your children from the time they're little and you raise them in the faith and they go on to become godly children someday, productive members of society, that they are an extension of you. No, you probably won't get all of the praise and the glory that they will someday. But know this, that it's your sacrificial love that ultimately poured into their life makes the difference, makes the impact. Well, let me just say it like this. Finally, I believe, as I said, moms leave a legacy. They love, they make an impact, and ultimately they leave a legacy. You see, good moms are ultimately remembered. They are. They're remembered. They leave an imprint, an imprint on the lives of their children, their husbands, their neighbors, their friends, their community. They just do. I want to show you a brief video of an elderly woman, a senior woman. I don't know the, the whole story behind her, but, but I think as you watch this video, it really captures the beauty of a godly woman and her commitment to loving the Lord and, and raising children and being a good a good spouse to their husband and things like that. Let's just take a moment and watch this video and then we'll wrap up the sermon. I looked in the mirror and what did I see but a little old lady peering back at me with bags and sags and wrinkles and wispy white hair and I asked my reflection, how did you get there? You once were straight and vigorous and now you're stooped and weak when I tried so hard to keep you from becoming an antique. My reflection's eyes twinkled and she solemnly replied, you're looking at the gift wrap and not the jewel inside, a living gem and precious of unimagined worth, unique and true, the real you, the only you on earth. The years that spoil your gift wrap with other things more cruel should purify and strengthen and polish up that jewel. So focus your attention on the inside, not the out, on being kinder, wiser, more content, and more devout. Then, when your gift wrap stripped away, your jewel will be set free to radiate God's glory throughout eternity. I don't know about you, but that's a pretty touching video. That is really a sweet video about a sweet woman. I don't know her. Um, I'm assuming, without a doubt, that she knows Christ and, and that someday I'll meet her in heaven. But there is a woman who, you can just look at her and know that she gave her life for others. And that's what moms do. They give and they give and they keep on giving when no one else will. Let me, let me close with these two quotes. And again, ladies, we just want to say thank you for loving as you do, making the impact as you do, and may you leave an amazing legacy. Listen to this quote. Children are a message we send to a time we will not see. Children are a message we send to a time that we will not see. You see, there is one day, most of, in most situations, um, their children will outlive their mother, and, and they are a message. They are a statement about a mom's life and how she poured into that child, those children. And the message will be a good one, ladies, if you are faithful, I think, and consistent in your love for your children and your commitment. We are a message that we send to a time that we will not see. The things you teach and the way you love makes a difference. Thank you for everything you do. You are truly changing the world one little heartbeat at a time. As it says in Proverbs 31, 31, 
give her the product of her hands. In other words, recognize, take time to recognize what this mother, what this woman has done and let her works praise her in the gates. I hope today you'll celebrate today and I hope that those around you will love you and praise you for all the ways that you have been such a good woman and good mother to them. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this special day, and I I really do pray that this message will encourage the women and the mothers in this church to, to go on, to not give up, to be faithful and consistent, and to love and make an impact and leave a legacy in the lives of their family, their children. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. God bless you.